Photoshop, the industry's standard and beloved sweetheart, has been in the digital creative scene for decades now. For a long time, the software had a monopoly over the digital art world. However, that monopoly soon dissolved with the arrival of other software that were not only as good as Photoshop, but also cheaper, or even free and open source. One of these software is Corel Draw. In today's video, we'll get to know both Corel Draw and Photoshop and figure out if this software can match the legendary ancient beast Photoshop. If you want to learn 2D animation, I recommend taking a look at CG Spectrum, which is one of the best online game development, VFX, and animation schools. They offer a more personalized education experience. And unlike other online schools, CG Spectrum follows a more hands-on approach with a lot of activities and weekly Q&A calls with instructors who have many years of experience working in the industry. So you will have the support and professional feedback you will need to get yourself industry ready, not to mention a thriving community of students just like you. Through the whole journey, your mentors will guide you through learning both modern and traditional animation techniques with multiple sessions a week. And they have two types of courses in CG Spectrum, 4-month courses and a 12-month diploma. The curriculum is well structured to make you job ready. So if you are interested in animation and open to new doors for yourself in the industry, check out the link in the description of this video. As a digital artist, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, you must have been living under a rock all these years, as this software is easily the standard of the digital art industry. The software works on the following operating systems. You have Windows, Mac OS, and iPad OS. It was originally made to edit images. However, artists used it for hand drawing, painting, and even graphic design for many years. Some still do, but new software have been created for these specific needs. The software purchased standalone and outside any Adobe Creative Cloud subscription plan would cost you around $21 a month. Corel Draw, as opposed to Photoshop, is a vector graphics editor. The software works on Windows and Mac OS and comes in multiple languages. The software's main use is for vector graphics based purposes, such as graphic design for instance. The software has different versions to suit your need from Corel Draw Essentials to Corel Draw Graphics Suit. These versions have different prices and different plans. You can either purchase a license or get a monthly subscription, whichever you like, and the price of the software will depend on those factors. Photoshop's interface has gone through so many changes over the years. I mean, how can it not change when it's been here for so long? Nowadays, we see Photoshop's interface in all sleek black with white icons, which you will find across all Adobe's products. The interface gives a very professional and focused look and feel to the software. Colors aside, the software's interface is organized in a way that is similar across the majority of 2D software these days. Which actually begs the question, could Photoshop have introduced this style of interface? That aside, let's explore this interface. Okay, on top you have the action menu bar with the usual file, edit, image, and so on and so forth. Beneath that is another bar with tools instead of an action menu. The sidebars are a different story. The left sidebar has all the drawing, shape, selection tools and such. The sidebar on the right has the color wheel at the top, a properties docker and a layers docker. The canvas is in the middle. And lastly, a tiny status bar is at the bottom with info such as zoom percentage and canvas size and DPI. Corel Draw is quite the opposite of Photoshop in terms of interface colors. The software is in all white with black icons. This, however, can be changed as there is a dark theme similar to Photoshop's default look. The presentation of the software does not stray away from the usual 2D software formula. Action menu bar at the top with a couple of other tools underneath it in a separate bar. A left sidebar with the most commonly used tools of the software. In Corel Draw, the right side has a color palette with a plethora of colors. 
small horizontal buttons are next to these palettes that pop three types of panels up. You have hint, you have properties, and object. The edges of these bars are ruler-like, making for a rudimentary guide. Among other options, the bar on the bottom has buttons to help you navigate the different pages of your project. For example, if you're working on the design of a booklet or brochure. Where do we even begin with Photoshop's tools? There are too many. For that reason, we'll only graze the most commonly used and prominent tools. One of Photoshop's most important tools is the brush tool. The software gives you a variety of brush tools, whether for digital painting and drawing or for photo retouching. Brushes are customizable and even downloadable. You see a brush used by your favorite artist available for download? You can get it and have it on your very own Photoshop brush list. Another great tool for portrait photographers is Spot Healing Brush Tool which basically evens the skin out, making for a spotless glowing skin. The selection tool is also a very important addition to the software. It comes with a variety of selection modes to make your work easier. The clone stamp tool is another great tool within the software. It helps you make copies of the object you want to clone, effectively making it into a stamp. Other great tools include the dodge and burn tool, pen tool, the gradient tool, and the blur and sharpen tool. As it's obvious from the great variety of its tools, Photoshop can be used by both photographers and digital artists who do hand-drawn work, such as digital painting and drawing. Although not a tool, it's noteworthy that Photoshop has plugins, which are basically options, features, and tools that aren't in Photoshop, but people develop to be integrated and used in Photoshop. They can help tremendously in bringing new features and tools to the app that aren't inherently in it. We actually have videos that introduce you to the best Photoshop plugins for painting and for graphic design. Feel free to check it out. Photoshop is not the only software with great tools. Corel Draw has some great tools in it as well. Let's go over some of the most commonly used tools in the software. First and foremost, navigating the shapes and drawings you make in Corel is very important. That's why the Pick tool is there. It helps you select the shape, move it around, and transform it. Adjusting the shape of the object, however, would require you to use a different tool, which is the Shape tool. Cropping your canvas will have you use the Crop tool. One thing about Corel Draw is that it will embed multiple variations of a tool in one. For instance, the Curve tool has multiple varieties for different purposes. Freehand tool should be your go-to for sketching your designs. The Pen tool is for drawing curves with nodes and the three-point curve tool is for when you want to draw a curve by marking the beginning, the end, and the center. These are only a handful. There are many tools within the Curve tool. There are also shape tools, basically allowing you to draw circles, squares, and polygons. There's, of course, a tool for inserting text and even tables. These are only some of the tools in the software. As the software is a vector graphics editor with these kind of tools, it shows that it's mainly for graphic designers and not illustrators. As Photoshop seems to be for both photographers and illustrators, it's the software with the most tools and features. As such, you might find it a little harder to grasp and get used to than Corel, as Corel's main target audience is graphic designers and, by extension, has tools that are tailor-made for that line of work. It's worth noting that if you have some kind of a background in 2D, both software will be a little easier to learn and get used to. At any rate, these software are so popular that you'll find plenty of videos on YouTube to accommodate all of your needs and answer all of your questions. Now that we have presented you with these two software, it's time to choose which is the best of the two. But before we do that, if you've been paying attention to this video, you'll notice that these two software are made for different purposes and for different types of art and artists. Corel Draw is made for vector-based work, so graphic design. 
Photoshop, however, doesn't process vectors and it's raster based, so it only knows good old pixels. With its set of tools, this software is best suited for image retouching and illustration. Trying to use this software for something that isn't part of their purpose and design will have you wallowing in agony. It just isn't worth it. So, as usual, these software don't win over each other. On the contrary, they can be quite complementary. Photoshop can help you retouch the photos you use in the design of the brochure you are designing on Corel Draw, for example. With that being said, we've reached the end of our video. We hope this helped you figure out a bit about the two software and was informative enough to inform your decision on which to choose. Comment below if you think that we've missed something or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.